Well, good morning and welcome to another video from uh, Big Ass Slabs Chainsaw Milling and Timber Works. Today I am going to be sharpening a chain. Uh, this is just for one of my small saws. Um, so it won't take very long, unlike my five foot bar that takes 20 minutes to half an hour to sharpen. Uh, there will be loads of debate on whether you should hand file or if you should use a um, bench mounted grinder. I'm of the opinion that if you're using the proper technique and know how to use your tools properly, both do a very good job. Um, for myself, with the number of chains that I have to sharpen and the length of them, I opt to use a bench mounted grinder. Uh, this is the one that I use. It is a, a power fist uh, from Princess Auto here in Canada. Um, I quite like it. It allows plenty of adjustment. I can adjust the angle of the tooth cutter from zero right through to 35 degrees. I can also adjust the individual angle or the the angle I can give a 10 degree tilt either way when the chain's sitting in the cradle. And here at the back, I have the ability to um, adjust from 50 through to 90 degrees on the uh, actual grinding stone. So today I'm using the 1 8 inch uh, grinding stone. For this size of chain. Uh, one of the first things I need to do, I've got a little bit of a, a glazing build up. I need to take the dressing stone and try to clean that up a little bit. Might be a little bit tough getting a good camera angle here. I don't have a uh, camera mount set up yet, but I just take this little dressing stone, turn on the, uh, the grinder. It's got a handy little work light right there. So I've dressed that, it's cleaned up the cutting, the grinding surface considerably. Um, there are other options for grinding wheels. There's a diamond cutting wheel that uh, I'm hoping to check out at some point soon that uh, I'm told does an excellent job. Uh, for now, this is what I have and this is what I'll be working with. So I start by setting a, the chain in there. I always like to see if there is a double cutter anywhere along. Sometimes, depending on the length of the chain, there's a nice spot where there are two cutters facing on the same side, side by each. So I use that for my initial spot so I know when I've gotten all the way around. Uh, the grinder has come with a handy little table telling me the angles that I need for the certain sizes. Um, for this, I'm running a 60 degree, a 30, and a 10. So the 60 degree is back here, which I've currently got the machine set for. I need to bring this around to 30 degrees and then a 10 degree tilt. So I tighten that up and this adjusts the uh, feed in. Just need to close up the cover from changing the stone. A little bit. It also has the ability to adjust the depth of the grinding cut so that I don't go too far down into the gullet. 
We don't want to uh, bottom out too far and start affecting the actual linkage of the chain. So I do just a little bit of a dry run here to make sure that the stone is about where I want it to be. Once I have it close, I turn it on, and just touch down, make some minor little adjustments as I go. You don't want to take too much off at once, otherwise you end up uh, burning the tooth and heating it up too much and that causes issues with the temper. Thankfully uh, this uh, particular chain hasn't uh, sustained any major damage it's just gotten dull from use it didn't hit any nails or stones or anything so this really is just a minor little touch-up. This is a chisel cutter on this chain, so you want to have a nice sharp point at this very tip of it right here. So oh, that's the first one time around on the first side. So now I'll unscrew the adjustment knob, swing this around to get 30 degrees in the other direction. And a 10 degree tilt on it. One thing I found is that sometimes it's not quite the same when you switch from one side to the other. So what I like to do is use a little micrometer and check the length of the cutter, compare it side to side to ensure that I get an even cut. Again, you only want to take just, just a small amount off 
otherwise you end up having heat damage to the tooth, to the cutter. And that is once around on both sides. One final thing I like to do is check the, uh, the depth cutters or the rakers. I put a straight edge along the top. And this should be fairly good because it's a, it's a brand new or nearly new chain. So I put the uh, straight edge along and I've got some shims here and as long as I can get a 25 thou shim between the straight edge and the uh, depth gauge that's good enough for now so that's uh, the basics of uh, sharpening the chain uh, thanks for watching Please uh, subscribe to my channel, share my channel, check me out on Facebook and Instagram as well, both as uh, Big Ass Labs, Chainsaw Milling and Timberworks. Thanks.